So in this video, I'm going to take shots at some people, particularly the backers of Errol Spence from the LDBC. I believe that if you are still listening to people like BFTB speak about boxing, then you need to have your fucking head examined. We're going to talk about maybe Boxing Eagle briefly, not that he's that relevant. We're going to talk about how 78 Sports TV tends to jinx the people he supports. And it's becoming a pattern. It's becoming a pattern with that dude. He is, after all, the LDBC. We're going to talk about Derek James and his part and the part he plays in this debacle that has befallen, this tragedy that's befallen Errol Spence. Because it is a tragedy. The guy, he got dominated. You know what I mean? It wasn't a close fight. We're going to talk about how that applies to Anthony Joshua and how Anthony Joshua's a fucking turncoat, um, a perfidious... Um, and who else? And anybody else who comes in this orbit of discussion. And we're not being totally negative. We're going to look at the positives, of course. The positives, definitely, in regards to Errol Spence, who I consider to be a gentleman. And the positive, of course, uh, that we need to uh, attribute towards the victor in Terrace Crawford. Let's get it popping, y'all. He's wrapping his own hands, as he always does. But you've said you've been waiting for this moment your entire life. The moment's now here. Can you describe that feeling? Just, I'm just ready, you know, I'm just calm, ready, waiting for this moment to, for me to shine. Calm internally too, or do you have nerves, butterflies? Well, you always got a little butterflies, but this is, like I said, I've been waiting for this moment my whole life, you know, and I'm ready for, for everything that comes with it. Do you feel any of the weight of the historic impact should you win? Nah, I ain't focused on that. I'm focused on nothing but the victory right now. You know, and things I got to do to make sure I secure the victory. But best of luck. We'll talk to you afterwards. It's strange. Hey. All good dances are changing. But it's only bubbling. That the young girls are playing. Shout out to all the haters and doubters. It's your boy on the screen. Two times. Again. Doubt me again. If all the hate and everything y'all said about me, yeah. What did I say? What did I say? Told you. The greatest. The greatest. The greatest. I know what I'm talking about. All you haters out there. I told you. All in all, you know, I get to say I told y'all. 
because I've been asking for these fights for years. And y'all been saying, oh, he's too small. He's going to get this. He's going to get broken. And each and every time that I step up, I prove y'all wrong. Each time. So, you know what I mean? Write some great stories about Terrence Crawford. Don't hate on him. Don't say nothing negative. Just give me my props. As far as going up against Derrick James, it's a, it's an honor. It's an honor. He's uh it was last year or year before last trainer of the year, and uh, you know they never really gave us our props. Uh, you know the the writers, the reporters, the you know all this, you know all the websites. So it, I mean I'm just glad. You know it hasn't, it hasn't sunk in yet, but it will here pretty soon. We just. To me, I just look at it like it's another day, you know. And you, you also got to give props out to uh, the whole team. You got Saul Diegas right here. You got Red Spike. Come on, we're up here, Red. You got Bar Bernie the Boxer. Uh, you even got Steve Soko Nelson, you know what I'm saying? He helps out a lot. You know, he uh, sometimes he see what we don't see. Uh, you got Chet. Chet, raise your hand. Chad, the strength and condition coach. Where Ashley at? They go Ashley right there. She's another strength and condition coach. We got, we got chefs. We got dietitians. So you guys are gonna need to think again about this stuff with Derek James. My commiserations go out to Earl Spence. I think he's a gentleman, but I do believe that he was overhyped. I don't say that he's a bad fighter. I believe he was overhyped. I do not believe he was as good as people were making him out to be, based on sheer attrition. And I, be, I believe that people change the standard. They change the standard simply because they want to accommodate their love of this guy based upon some emo emotional attachment. It was an emotional attachment that was allowed to grow and fester and, and become something abnormal, detached from reality as a matter of fact. It was so detached from reality that they just felt that Errol Spence could, could walk through walls. Do you remember the uh, nonsense that was being put on social media when Errol Spence was body punching some big fat guy on the street and they were making out like Errol Spence drops a heavyweight. This was some street shit and it's been like that for a minute. Errol Spence started getting involved in situations that he shouldn't have been in as a fighter. Now he's only human and I've said before I feel I believe that he's a gentleman. I feel I believe he's a decent person. I think from the very beginning when he was approached by that, that upstarter, that troublemaker, that devil as a matter of fact, by the name of Barbershop Conversations and told what Bernie Mac, what Bo Mac, Brian Mac, McIntyre, is that his name? I can't, you know what, I, don't, I never know his name. Brian McIntyre, I believe his name is, or something like that. Anyway, Terrence Crawford's trainer. When they approached, I was supposed to was just coming back from Jamaica or going to Jamaica or something like that. And from that moment, I feel that Terrence Crawford and Errol Spence were on a collision course and Errol Spence was not comfortable with it. I don't think he was comfortable with it. I don't think he really believed from that moment. I think even when I look, I look back now, I don't think he ever believed that he had the talent or what is required to beat somebody like Terrence Crawford. Terrence Crawford, Crawford always knew. He always knew. He knew in a way, in a way that Floyd Mayweather always knew that he could beat Oscar De La Hoya. If you look back at the history of that, Floyd always believed that Oscar was not on his level. Now, Oscar actually had a closer fight with Floyd than Floyd would have liked. If I'm not mistaken, it was a split decision win or some shit like that. But it was Golden Boy Promotions and Oscar De La Hoya was allowed to do a lot of stuff that was in his favor in order to get the, to get the win. And, um, oh, sorry, in order to convince some of his supporters that he won. People like, you know, uh, who looks as a child as senior believes that Oscar won and all that nonsense. But that's by the by. I'm saying this because um, if you look at social media now, the people that were so adamant so convinced or desperate to convince others I'm not even sure they were convinced themselves because I do believe that the term charlatan really does apply here but they were very convinced absolutely convinced that Terrence Crawford was ducking was the one who was truly ducking Spence and that Spence was going to beat Terrence Crawford etc etc I don't know how they're going to be able to pull off the narrative in the aftermath of the fight I'm sure they'll find a reason or some excuse or some way to explain it away even up to the last minute they were gasping grasping grasping not gasping grasping straws 
in the hope and belief that Terrence Crawford would be affected by making weight. Terrence Crawford might would be affected by making weight of some sort. He came from one source on social media, notorious for just using himself as a source and then saying that, oh, we can't question him because we don't question white sources, which is, once you hear that, you know, it, it is what it is. But um, in as much as the fight is concerned, it was a lot, it was more dominating than I expected it to be. Terrence Crawford dominated spends more than I expected him to be but then again when you look back the signs were there you saw El Spence on the bag you saw El Spence on the mitts and you just feel that how how is this you saw El Spence talking about a rematch had to happen at 154 you saw El Spence talking about how difficult you could see even even the way he's thinking you know when somebody's fasting and they get mind fog that's the way he was talking that's why he said what he said like oh i'm not one of your kids you know because even the way he sounded there is because he just didn't have the energy and he had mind fog and the weight cut and everything and you know it is what it is he lacked you know these things take time to build up is what and reward said to take a cover love that you have these bad habits it takes years and years and years to sort of extinguish or purge yourself of these bad habits and be, and be reborn anew so this is what this one more time takes me to this idea of Derek James I feel that once again we have to come back to reality when it comes to Derek James I have said before that when you have a trainer like Derek James and he gets a modicum of success suddenly they start do you have some people who are absolutely thirsty and desperate absolutely desperate to try and make it out that those accomplishments are bigger than what they really are you know and, and suddenly you know, I was listening to Malik James, Malik, Malik Scott, and Malik Scott was talking about the training of Derek James, and, and I'm thinking, you don't, you sound stupid. You haven't even been around training that much, and all of a sudden you're an expert on how people train people. Now that is the work of Derek James on display right there. Totally, his fight got totally dominated by the fight that was supposed to be on his level. We are talking about the best fighting the best, and one dominates the other to that extent. Was it three knockdowns and then a stoppage or something? Three knockdowns and a stoppage by under a trainer who's been touted as trainer of the year, one of the best out there. The one that Anthony Joshua has simply attached himself to now and actually thrown his own trainer under the bus, that fucking Benedict Arnold. You see, I say that about Anthony Joshua, but let me take another detour. Because Anthony Joshua is a fucking Benedict Arthur Arnold and a perfidious prat. A total, typical, perfidious Nigerian, as a matter of fact. Because what you were saying before then is that this man helped you, he helped redirect your life. You were on your way to prison or some shit like that. The motherfucker came up, your trainer, back then, came to court to try and help you and got you out of situation then they took you to the, took you to the Olympics and building upon that he built the foundation upon which you will build and then you've got the audacity to talk about that man the man that you said it wasn't even about being a trainer it's about being a man he helped you be a man and now you're with Derek James and you're laughing he 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 ha 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 you become a nigger you turned into a nigger you see this is why this is why Americans have got Anthony Joshua figured out Americans have Anthony Joshua figured out and all you British fans need to be very careful with Anthony Joshua because Anthony Joshua like a lot of Americans sorry a lot of Nigerians like a lot of Nigerians that you might know want to be Americans even their music is Americanized even their music their, their Afrobeat is Americanized their videos is Americanized they will sell out they will sell out anything they've got to be like, like black Americans and then go over there and then start talking about whatever the fuck which is none of my business but if you watch the pattern of behavior of Anthony Joshua with those pictures I would take like he's shooting dice with a durag on his head it doesn't look right with a baseball hat it never looks right talking about drug dealers and all them that he's got the, the, they have the same mentality never sounds right the Americans have gotten figured out I just don't like the way they went about it I just don't like the way they went about it it is what it is but going back to this fight Anthony Joshua forget him going back to this fight Tess Crawford comes out on top and I suppose he saved the day in a way in a way he saved the day because of domination that dominate that dominating performance domineering performance over another welterweight a highly respected welterweight in Errol Spence definitely puts him at number one pound for pound with three knockdowns definitely puts him up pound we're not talking about Stephen Fulton here <laughs> We're not talking about Stephen Fulton here. He went over to Japan with his little pigtail and then fucking got fucking. I, I don't even know. Prior to that, though, prior to the fight that Stephen Fulton supposedly had with Nui, 
he underperformed anyway. But we were so enamored and so sort of uh, brainwashed to believe that the American black fight would just be too fucking clear, too crafty, too crafty for a Japanese fighter. Because let's face it, he you know he's an anomaly. Japanese fighters are usually, they get a certain body of success, but at elite level, they are absolutely shy. They're worse than British boxers. They're worse than British boxers. They, they can fight the little Mexicans and stuff like that and get lit. In fact, do they even beat Mexicans? When's the last time you saw a Japanese do box like that? Box the way they knew he boxed. In that sort of domineering, dominating, absolutely super confident fashion. So much though that if we're telling the truth here, when you see the comparisons between what he did, you get the feeling that he did kind of study Floyd a bit. But let's not say it. Let's not say it. Let's not conjure up that evil word or that evil name. But you get the feeling when people show what's, what went on with him and Fulton. You get the feeling that he studied Floyd a bit. But obviously, I can't be certain. He might be his own, you know, Japanese genius. That being said, Ted Crawford is definitely number one pound for pound now. And he saved the day because I felt that if this fight was close, let me just talk about my own bias, prejudices and everything else, my own fail my own failings and weaknesses here. My predilections and peccadillos. You know what I mean? Here's the thing. I felt that it was going to be a nightmare if this fight was close. I'd maybe end up in a draw. It would be very, very difficult to dislodge Inui from the number one pound for pound spot. It would be very you know, but let, let, let's let's face it. The truth of the matter is they started incorporating when Tyson Fury beat um Deontay Wilder, suddenly they started incorporating uh, heavyweights into the pump of pound list because, you know, that's just the way it works. There's a certain level of unfairness and, you know, and people don't talk about pump, but it's important how they maneuver and switch things around in order to promote um, the image of a fighter or the ability of a fighter and so on. But I think many people were reluctant to put heavyweights on the pump pound list until Tyson Fury beat Deontay Wilder. I say that because it depends on the performance that Usyk has against Dubois. I have a suspicion that it's going to be a masterful performance as well. And once, more, and once again, we're going to have a discussion about whether Usyk is definitely from pound for pound. But you know, while Tyson Fury is around, I think it's, I think there's, there's always going to be that difficulty. If Tyson Fury had got into the ring with Usyk and Usyk had, as I expected, in the same fashion that we have with Tess Crawford versus Tess Crawford versus uh, Spence here, I think what we just saw right now. What we just saw right now, if Tyson Fury saw that, I think he knows that that's the same thing that might just happen to him against Usyk. The skills, skills play the build. He's just a superior fighter, and you can get away with all this other nonsense like you do with other people. I have always been found it very difficult to understand how Errol Spence beat up Udanis Ugas that in that fashion. It, a lot of it doesn't make sense to me, especially from a Cuban fighter. I almost feel. I almost feel that there was a fixing because Dennis Ugas was supposed to fight Stanionis but uh, he lobbied the WBA to let him have a unification with Errol Spence because of the money and then he it's almost like I, I, you know it's almost like he cashed out it's almost like he cashed out but I don't know I don't know for sure I mean people are going to do what they're going to do to take care of their family it is what it is and there'll be other opportunities so for Dennis Ugas so and he's already you know got Pacquiao under his belt there was, there was no, nowhere else for him to go really but to give the belt up to Spence and that's what happened and that also helped the legacy legacy, legacy of Spence allow people to believe that he's a match for Tess Crawford myself included to a certain degree I thought that he would have some success but for Tess Crawford to dominate him I did feel though that El Spence wasn't really in the right space he didn't look right in the media workout but he, ne he never looks that good anyway in the media workout but on this occasion, on the back, he just looked like, what the hell is, I, I remember thinking, what the hell is this? Okay, uh, maybe I'm missing something here. Because I've always known the guy to be like a, a bit of a, a bit of a Gennady Golovkin type of fighter. A fighter, forgive me. A Gennady Golovkin type of fighter, just straight up and down, no special effects. But you know, for some reason, for some reason, all these, um supporters, these, these aficionados who love the slick black fight free all out the window when it comes to a Errol Spence or that other dude, Deontay the Bronze Bomber Wilder, then you know it doesn't really matter anymore. They're just black and that's it. And they'll criticize other fighters who, I don't know, but hey, it is what it is. Congratulations to Terrence Crawford. I'll, I'll tell you this though, when I saw Errol Spence get knocked down, I was sad. 
I really was. I, my heart, I, I watched it twice and I had the same reaction twice. I went, <gasps> do you know what I mean? It was almost like, you know, I'm not even, I, I, I'm not a supporter of Errol Spence. I do like him, I suppose. I do like him. I think that he, uh, he's a very honest person. I think he wants to be a decent person based upon the environment he's in. But I, I swear to God, man, I watched Errol Spence. When this Errol Spence situation began, you know what I mean? When it began, I went back and watched Errol Spence in the amateurs and I saw him get outboxed by some Eastern European dude and ever since then, I felt like, you know, there's something here that doesn't make up, that doesn't make sense. There's something here that doesn't make sense. He got thoroughly outboxed by that dude, that guy, it was, it was, it was a joke. You know what I'm saying? And then, he, and then I, I forgot about that and then he went in with Kel Brook and then he was getting outboxed by Kel Brook. I thought to myself, this is ridiculous. And then he goes into a fight with uh, Mikey Garcia and he doesn't stop Mikey Garcia. You know? But uh, what's done is done. Like I said, when he got knocked down, I I, I was I, I sucked in there like, like this wasn't meant to happen, but it happened. The first time. And, it, and when he got up, it wasn't like a flash knockdown. It wasn't a flash knockdown, bro. He was, uh, he was unstable on his feet. And that's when, I, and you know, Crawford was going to finish it off. But he got saved by the bell. So we go back to Derek James. You guys, Derek James, Derek James cannot help Anthony Joshua. Derek James cannot help Anthony Joshua. You need a trainer that's going to change your, your mobility. What is needed is mobility. For Anthony Joshua. You know? It's like, um, when I talk about mobility, you need to loosen up in a way that really allows him to it, it, it's to have mobility. He's still stiff. He's still going around chopping wood. He needs to do things that is going to make him explosive and react quicker. And Derek James is not the dude to do that for you. We saw that with the, with the whole career of Errol, of, of Errol Spence, yeah. I see that. With the career of Jamil Charlo. Yeah. It's diesel shit. It's diesel shit. It's not quick. It's just diesel, diesel quick, heavy helmet uh, with some fundamentals. Errol Spence did not look like Tim Duncan in there. When he made the comparison, I thought it was awkward and absurd. He didn't have the mobility or the quick thinking or the style of a Tim Duncan. Who in my video I called the center boy is actually a power forward, forgive me. But when he made that comparison, it seemed absurd. That's why I said he's diesel. He's a bit like Shaq, just brute force. Brute force. And that didn't pay off. Didn't pay off against Terrence Crawford. How did Terrence Crawford dominate this dude in the way that he did? Stronger, faster, heavier punching. What, what happened? I saw Errol Spence throw a looping right. Like, 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 like an amateur. It was horrible. I don't know. Listen, man. I, I, listen, I, I still put this on Derek James. And for all those YouTubers out there, shame on you. The egos. No, not the. No, actually, not YouTubers. The support. Yeah, the YouTubers on there. And, 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 and you know the LDBC. The LDBC head of LDBC keeps on fucking jinxing boxers, man. He keeps on jinxing fighters. You need to stop talking. About, actually, he carry on. It doesn't even matter. I was gonna say you need to stop talking about Devin Henry because you're gonna jinx that nigga too. You're gonna jinx them all. I swear to God, man. I fought this when he started carrying on like I've been talking about Errol Spence. This God knows when. I know this nigga. This nigga's jinxed. Same way he did his boy. Deontay Wilder. He jinxes fight. Same way he did his basketball team. You know what I mean? He jinxes him. You know what? Because your conscience is not clear. You're smoking too much fucking weed and you're involved in porn. It is what it is, man. One thing with them when they get hungry This is what they say to me I like my hat, hat, hat With what? Grace, Jamaican ketchup I like my hat hamburger With what? Grace, Jamaican ketchup 
fish and chips and chicken and chips and almost everything nice with chips. It's macaroni, rice and peas. You lick your lips. That's a ketchup. Great. Jamaican ketchup. Great. Jamaican ketchup. Chop, 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 chop. Over me, the mama do over me. Over me, the mama do over me. Just cool, just cool. It's not right to call yellow man a fool. Fire! I told y'all, pay me my duckies, man. Oh, my heart in the blast. That nigga will listen to Boozy before he put on them gloves. He let Boozy walk him out to the fight on AGO. I told you, nigga. Pay me my ducking. Boy, boy, bad, man. Heart of a line. All my niggas win against you, boy. Look at this nigga over here. This nigga looking like a... Pay me my ducking. <laughs>